Hello, book two, and welcome back to the library tour of Doom, <laughs> where I am doing a library tour, book by book, shelf by shelf, bookcase by bookcase, until you break. <laughs> and today, we're doing a 1947 classic, a book that didn't start out as a classic. This is The Everglades, River of Grass, by Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. And uh, this was originally proposed to her, um, as just one in a series of brief profiles of rivers. But she, the more she researched, the more she realized how little research she had, she had to draw on and how much of a story there was to tell about the Everglades, not just the, the waterway that feeds it, but also the ecosystem that that waterway supports. The more she studied it, and that's key, it's not so much that she spent nights and nights in the Everglades, as I have done. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not that. It's the more she studied it, the more she realized a one startling fact that informs the amazing first line of this book, which is that there's no other Everglades anywhere in the world. There's no other ecosystem quite like it. And at the time that she wrote this book, it was rampantly farmed. It was being, the word was reclaimed uh, for agriculture, drained, canaled, farmed, uh, in a way that Marjorie Stoneman Douglas was one, among the first and certainly the most influential to realize would be would cause an irreparable loss. When it was gone, there would be no way for it ever to come back. And so she uh, went to the person who originally proposed this idea and said, no, it's a much bigger idea than that. I must, I must write a much bigger book than that. And she did, and it was an amazing success story. This, this book, whether you have encountered it or not, in a, a bitter irony that is endemic to America, probably Marjorie Stoneman Douglas's name is best known to the most number of people in 2021, not for the great book that she wrote, that single-handedly saved a huge and irreplaceable and ecological environment for future generations to study and enjoy, but for a school shooting. There was a mass shooting in Parkland at a school named after her. And that is uh, the, 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 one of the bitter ironies of American society is that's probably the way she's best known today, by name recognition anyway. But if you have not read this book, you really should. And especially if you live in Florida, if you have ever been to the Everglades, you owe that experience. If you found it was mind-blowing, if you saw an alligator, if you were lucky enough to see a crocodile, if you saw the, the egrets pumping their way up into the air, if you saw any of that in the way that it looks now, you owe that experience, the amazing experience of that, to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. You owe her a personal debt. And it's not like reading the book is a hardship. The book is actually beautiful, just beautiful. One of those rare, uh, pivotal classics that's also an amazingly absorbing reading experience. They aren't always. Good luck trying to read The Jungle by Upton Sinclair and enjoy it. Uh, they aren't always an enjoyable reading experience. Those two don't, things don't go hand in hand. And I think as a society, we probably shouldn't require that they do. Uh, but in this case, boy, oh boy, do they ever. Now, this edition uh, is, has illustrations by Robert Fink, who I think we've seen on this channel in uh, illustrating other nature books. I just want to read you one bit of this. I'm going to make sure the, the library tour of Doom uh, is not designed to crush your spirit with the length of each individual video. Instead, it's the prolonged experience of never being allowed up off the mat. <laughs> so the videos themselves don't have to be long. I want to read you a bit of uh, Rivers of Grass. I, I want to uh, work hard not to read you just huge amounts of it because it is beautifully written. Uh, let's see here. Uh, East, in the pale green inshore currents, the hordes of fighting fishes ran the sharks and the barracudas, the mackerel and the bonito, the wahoo and the kingfish and the amberjack, moving in from the deeps to spawn and feed in the shoals. They crowded the bays and rivers. The silver mullet jumped before them among hissing acres of minnows as the big fish drove and ravaged behind them. Overhead, the crowded seabirds screamed and swooped and fed. But south, in the Bay of Florida, and west up the coast over the shoals of the sunken Florida plateau, trooped millions of other fish in long processions. The striped mullet, the snook, the snapper, the pompano, the mo and moving north and so around the shape of the Gulf of Mexico. The bays and passes were thick with fingerlings of every kind, and laughing gulls and terns and constant pelicans, and the heavy mergansers preyed on them. The green turtles from the outer sea plowing heavily ashore to lay their eggs, which the bears and panthers dug up. 
Out of the slow western mangrove rivers, the small tarpon moved in the spring and grew huge and traveled east and west, rolling and exploding upward from the night-colored waters in unbelievable bursts of crystal and silver under the whiteness of the tide-swelling moon. And she goes on like that for hundreds of pages at a time. This is not just an ecology of the Everglades, it's also a history of the whole region. Full of personalities and action, military encounters, and uh, a broader context. This is a, a genuine work of, of historical research in addition to being a groundbreaking work of ecological awareness lifting. It reads in, in many, many parts like the best old narrative adventure historians like Prescott or Parkman. And it's not, it's not a quality that's known about this book to people who've only heard about it but haven't read it. I want, I want to stress that you should read this book even if you've never set foot in Florida. Uh, as, speaking as an American, I can say never setting foot in Florida is probably advisable. <laughs> there, is, there is an absolute amount of truth behind the stereotypical folkloric nature of the Florida man. <laughs> Anything that can be weird will happen in Florida. So, But uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas got a few brickbats in her own life from critics of her. It was almost impossible to criticize her. She herself knew that. She knew that it was almost impossible to criticize her because she was completely right. She was completely in the right. And she was also this sweet little old lady with a tongue like a jackhammer. So she knew that it, that it was tough to criticize her. And the, the small phantom of criticism that was lifted against her in her own day was how could she be the foremost champion of the Everglades when she spent almost no time there? And she pointed out, she made a point, she acknowledged that, and she made a point that I think bears repeating, which is that you don't need to, to have physically experienced something in order to recognize that it's incredibly precious and should be preserved. That was the case she made. You ecologists with an equal amount of passion and eloquence could make that case about vanishing ecosystems all over the world without ever having set foot in them. Uh, it's just, in, in this particular case, you have something that's not only a great work of advocacy, but also a fantastic work of nature writing and history. So your, your book today is, as most of them will be, a wholehearted recommendation. Uh, so that is, that is the Library Tour of Doom for today. You'll have to tune in next time to see what the next one will be. We're not going in any, any order. We're not going by any kind of theme. We'll, be, we'll have ample duplication. I may do the big snow tomorrow. <laughs> I'll see you then. Thank you, BookTube.